we know that uh, the Kuomintang, uh, and especially the New Party people or the People's First Party, uh, like to talk about Li Denghui as the source of corruption or talk about the corruption of Taiwan politics as though it is a matter of the Taiwanese, the influence of the Taiwanese, and uh, that uh, James Song and other mainlanders and Lianzan are above it. Uh, but, uh, you know, really the facts uh, are quite to the contrary. And uh, first of all, I think if we look at the sociological perspective, we have to understand uh, the black gold and particularly the Guomindang's connections with local factions and local gangsters uh, in terms of its efforts to keep control after the end of martial law. Uh, that is, as the capacity of the Guomindang to control through military means or through threat of political arrest decreased, it had to seek uh, more of a consensus within Taiwan society, uh, but a consensus with the elite of Taiwan society, which actually was the direction that Zhang Jingguo was going uh, in the, in the mid-70s. Uh, so that really was a continuation of earlier policies of buying off local factions and uh, giving local factions that cooperated with the Guomindang uh, special privileges and then uh, later as the economy became more diversified uh, giving them things like lucrative contracts and licenses. So I mean all of this developed uh, very much before uh, Li Denghui was even vice president but uh, particularly and I must say somewhat to my observation because uh, uh, my husband at that time, Shimingda, was running for election uh, in ni late 92. Uh, the people who were aligned with the Guomindang were specifically real estate speculators and gangs overlapping with real estate speculators. And you could understand how the tremendous amounts of money handed out, uh, 25 million U.S., uh, 50 million U.S. handing out in buying the elections, how that related to um, the special zoning privileges they would get after the elections if they got into office. So, you know, I mean, all of this is, uh, has a long history. It's just, of course, the black gold got worse when the Guomindang had to give out more goodies to Taiwanese society and not rule just by an iron, iron, iron fist. Now, if we look at more specific cases, you know, I think it's really funny that Lian and Song uh, are the heads of the parties that are going to try to accuse uh, Li Denghui of corruption because I mean if you look at Lian specifically he was uh, found uh, to have failed to uh, uh, report in his personal finances that he had lent over one million dollars US to the man who was running for the head of Pingdong County that is the Guomindang candidate of course uh, who was uh, later convicted of um, taking kickbacks on water uh, works construction in Taipei County, which caused quite a lot of uh, damage, as I understood, and uh, uh, huge amounts of money. So, you know, I mean, conveniently, uh, Li Denghui uh, is supposedly to blame for this, but conveniently it was Lian Zhan who uh, lent him over a million dollars U.S. for his campaign. And then finally, of course, uh, this person, uh, 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 Wu Ziyuan, uh, was protected to the end by the KMT legislators. Uh, he was elected into the legislature even though he was under 18 years sentence and then at the end of his term as legislature, as legislator, uh, other uh, KMT legislators helped him to get away. He never went to jail at all. You know, this is a, a good example. Now Song, we have of course his own uh, specific uh, uh, scandal with the um, uh, what's it called? I think it's called the uh, Zhongxing uh, Securities, where uh, an account was found uh, supposedly in his son's name, but uh, this money probably came from his uh, service as uh, governor of Taiwan when he ran for governor of Taiwan uh, as Guomindang. So, you know, I mean, you look at both these cases, and the, the, the hard goods as to who is corrupt uh, really falls on the blue side. Well, I got a, a pretty close view of uh, uh, black gold because uh, I went around and uh, did a lot of interviewing uh, during the, um, right after the 1991 election. Uh, it was the end of the year of 1991 for the National Assembly. And then my husband, uh, Shermingda, was running for the legislature 
uh, in uh, December of 1992. That is to take office, of course. Uh, in well, as far as black gold, I think you know I've written a few articles about it. And it was especially in the early 90s when I came back to Taiwan that I got a good view of it. Um, but I did know in the 70s, of course, at that time that the local factions who cooperated with the Kuomintang uh, generally got some favors in terms of licenses or local contracts or local power. Uh, but what I saw in 1991 and then uh, basically uh, early 92 when I did a lot of uh, uh, questioning, a lot of interviewing, and then when my husband ran for legislature from uh, Tainan City in late 92, uh, the pattern was much clearer. And that is basically uh, the Kuomintang was allied with uh, local gangs and uh, real estate speculators. So the big thing in the early 90s was real estate speculation. And uh, a person who wanted to get the position of uh, legislator would uh, quite commonly spend 25 million US uh, to buy the vote uh, at different levels. And from other sources, I've heard it was up to 50 million. But uh, the cases I got people to talk to me about were like, over 25 million US. And you could understand how they could make that much money back because it was the whole machine of the Kuomintang, uh, but um, not just the central Kuomintang, basically the local branches that would uh, gerrymander and uh, manipulate the uh, city zoning so that whoever was in office could make a lot of money uh, by rezoning and uh, building apartment buildings, you know, millions of dollars US because. Taiwan is a densely populated country, and uh, the real estate is extremely valuable. And then the candidates could uh, borrow money from banks, also on the basis of the real estate, what we call cao dai. That is, they could, uh, be with their political connections, uh, they could uh, uh, borrow, uh, say, 125% of their equity in the real estate from the banks. But of course, if they lost the elections, quite often they would uh, abscond. Uh, and then this led to a large amount of the uh, banking crisis that has uh, been hitting Taiwan since the mid-90s, uh, the banking crisis of uh, 8 or 9% insolvency on loans. So it's really been all part of one package. Um, but you know, there's no way you can say that Li Dengwei was responsible for this. I mean, this is really laughable. It's a whole, it's a whole system. Uh, you know, including the, uh, the banks, the local uh, KMT candidates, uh, the, um, uh, you know, the people at the center who uh, were their patrons. It's all part of one big package. And if you look at the, the overall pattern, I think it's pretty clear that uh, as the KMT was unable to maintain its uh, control and power by straight uh, military terror or straight, you know, police, uh, secret police terror, then it increasingly uh, relied on uh, buying off local factions that cooperated uh, with the center mainlander government. Uh, you might say it was a kind of uh, downward flow of, of power, you could say it in a way, or downward flow of the spoils, because I think in the old days, you know, like when I was young in Taiwan, uh, and the uh, 60s and the 70s. I mean, basically, uh, the mainlanders uh, had their hands, they had their grip on all the state corporations and got all their privileges and perks uh, from the state corporations and from the party that shared, basically shared the coffers of the government. So, probably not until the late 90s, excuse me, the late 70s, uh, when uh, Taiwanese began to have their own enterprises and uh, some degree of independence did the central apparatus of the Kuomintang feel it had to, in fact, did have to buy off local society to get the consent of the governed to some extent. So maybe let me give you that answer. Uh, and of course, uh, Lian Zan himself is certainly not clean hand. Uh, and it was a scandal quite a few years ago when uh, it was found that he had given a one million uh, dollar loan, one million U.S., which he said he didn't remember, uh, to uh, Wu Zeyuan, uh, a KMT candidate for uh, 
Pingdong uh, County head, who was later uh, convicted of uh, various kinds of uh, bribery and not bribery, but kickbacks. So I mean, the, the connections are there. It's quite obvious.